Welcome to Think Tech on Spectrum OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Elise Anderson. And I'm Emmy Ortega Anderson. In our show this time, we'll take a drive out to Haleiwa and see the annual Metric Century Ride organized by the Hawaii Bicycling League. The ride was 100 kilometers or 60 miles along the North Shore on Sunday, April 28th and also featured a fun ride for the keiki. The Hawaii Bicycling League is a community sports nonprofit organized more than 40 years ago to support and advocate for cycling in Hawaii. It has strong leadership and thousands of member cyclists and friends. Its two principal riding events are the Century Ride in September and this metric Century Ride in April. Haleiwa Metric Century Ride um, and a little fun ride. So, great day. Um, we've got the Royal Hawaiian Band here. We're back at Kayaka Bay Beach Park, which is the uh, start and the end of the ride. And uh, welcoming riders back, and we're having a good time. Well, the riders set off, uh, the, most of them set off at 7.30 a.m., and they're riding up to 100 kilometers, so they're starting to come back in greater numbers now. Um, and we're welcoming them back. You know, we've uh, tried to make this as festive as possible. So they return, they have some fun. Um, in addition to the music and, um, you know, we have some massage going on. Um, we have uh, various um, kind of things of interest, like the bamboo bikes people are here. There's a, um, a program, Imua Kako Trikes. They create specialized trikes for uh, children with disabilities. So really great program, giving giving bicycling to kids that otherwise uh, wouldn't be able to, to, to bicycle and experience the joy that uh, every kid should have. Um, and uh, we also have Wailua High School here, and I think this is the fourth year in a row we've had them fundraise. So we always want the, the, the I mean, obviously this is a fundraiser for Hawaii Bicycling League. Yeah, so it, it supports all of our work, and we're, of course, a local nonprofit. But we try to give back as much as possible to other other entities within the community. So one of the partnerships is uh, Wailua High School. Each year they figure out which of their programs they want to benefit. So previously it's been uh, kind of their after school A plus program. This year it's uh, in relation to their baseball program. In the world of bicycling, it's looking up. More people are bicycling, um, uh, particularly transportation cycling. So if you've been in Honolulu, you live in there, You've noticed there's been an increase in bicycling in the last few years. And the numbers that the census collects, really robust numbers on uh, people's commute, it tells us that's that's occurring, that we're seeing significant uh, bump in people riding. Um, and I think that's translating into our events. We're seeing more people and uh, in our membership. We, uh, we exceeded 2,000 members for the first time. One of the reasons that's important, of course, the, the members, they financially support us, but also it kind of gives us some voice when we go to advocate, when we go to lobby for um, projects and policies that will make it uh, safer for people to bicycle and just generally make our roads more welcoming to people walking, bicycling, and, and safe for everyone. This session it passed, but there's a lot of dirty tricks going on and it could have failed. There was no money involved in the bill, but the money committees have to still give a release. So Ways and Means gave the release, but finance didn't give it. And if finance didn't finally give it, it would have died. And that's the same thing that happened two years ago. Finance inexplicably did not release on a bill that had no money in it. And so two years, we've, we could have had red light cameras. We haven't. How many people have died because of red light running in those two years? For this year, it will not change anything because the only thing the bill grants is um, a committee to work out the details for how a red light system is going to work. Let's give it up. Next session, January, the committee is going to present the report and says, this is how the photos are going to be taken, um, whether it's going to be the photo of the person or just the license plate. This is how the HPD is going to run it and all the different islands. This is how the money is going to be handled. If somebody wants to uh, appeal the fact that they got a ticket in the mail, how they can appeal. So all those details will be worked out and presented to the legislature next session. If they approve, they have to approve another bill, then it'll take effect probably in July of 2020. And even from then, they'll still have to be procurement and so forth. So I would think the earliest that we'll see something at the, at the best is going to be um, 2021. 700 people came out to ride a bike. 
uh, along the North Shore from um, Haleiwa to um, Kahuku and Haula and back. And it's just to celebrate biking, celebrate health, celebrate being outdoors. When you have a large ride, the drivers see a lot of people biking. So it's in general safer for everybody. They know that they got to be careful. And we hope that that will translate to every day that drivers got to look out for cyclists. And cyclists have to behave properly too. You know, ride single file, stay on the right. Unless the lane is too narrow for a car and bike, then sometimes you got to go in the middle of the lane. But that's what it is, and more and more people are doing it. We have a short ride to uh, today. You can go six, kilo, uh, six kilometers, that's um, two miles. You can go 10 kilometers, that's six miles. Or you can go the whole 100 kilometers, which is 62 miles. So something for everybody and like you know, riding a bike is fun. There was plenty of preparation for the metric century. In the weekend of April 6th, there were workshops for trikes, tandems, and biki bikes at Aloha Tower. That evening, there was a light up the night ride with HPD in Waikiki, and there were cycling workshops at the Croc Center in Kapolei. This ride was an opportunity for cyclists to enjoy a great day of cycling along Oahu's North Shore and to meet new friends and cyclists of all levels. Cyclists could choose to ride 30, 50, 80, or 100 metric kilometers. great ride riders out here um, I saw the first group look like it was being led by uh, Ray who works at Boca he's just a world-class rider this frame was cracked by the airline when I was traveling I bought a $15 carbon repair kit at Home Depot things held up for a year solid as rock <laughs> so no I'm not an equipment freak there's a bike computer on the front a Garmin Edge and then we've got these pedals that measure our power, some sensors to measure cadence and speed and distance, and of course the heart rate monitor. So we're getting a lot of data. Um, I don't know if it helps at all, but... <laughs> when you look at it afterward? We look at it after and during the ride to make sure we're pacing ourselves right. It was very good. Uh, the weather was good today. It was overcast most of the day. The road was... Uh, overcast is good, isn't it? Overcast is good, and the road was flat, and there was no wind. So the stars lined up. And the traffic, how was the traffic? Not bad at all. Uh, and most of the drivers were pretty respectful for the riders. And that's why I ride in groups, because it's much safer. When I say uh, ride in groups, I mean large groups, the entire group for the metric century. Um, the more riders on the road, the more aware drivers are. Oh, it was awesome, but it was a little tough 
like my feet go numb and your back starts to hurt and it's really not about the riding it's like how much can you withstand the pain of your body how are the aid stations what role did they play in, in helping you oh they were amazing um i mean all the good carbs and healthy carbs that you need and good fats with the peanut butter i definitely helped myself plenty of times does, I, does this encourage you to ride more today yeah absolutely because it's uh something like i haven't ridden this far um, I just moved here in January, so this is something I was training for, so I'm looking forward to something again. Some Rich crackers with peanut butter, that'll make you live forever. <laughs> well, are you part of the aid station or just... Well, uh... my family is. This is my wife and my son. Family, son, smiling. We live in Haleiwa, so I do the race every year, and so it's really close to the house, and then they jump in and, and uh, do the aid station too. And we loaded trucks yesterday too. It's actually kind of fun, you know, you get to meet a lot of people. Get to know a lot of people, so it's been fun. I did well. About uh, so I, because I've been staying up here for four months, I've been training on these roads. So I had the unusual experience of riding a long ride like this on roads that I'm actually familiar with. It was really a lot of fun. I joined as a member uh, when I uh, four months ago when I first got here. I joined as a member so I could follow along. That's how I learned about it. I wouldn't have known otherwise. Uh, registration for it was very easy. Uh, very good uh, email communications back and forth to keep us informed. It's a great turnout here. It was a good, good at the start, good at the finish. I love the fact that they got the Royal Hawaiian Band up here. It's just terrific. To me, bike, biking will always be dangerous. Um, we have so few streets. Uh, I mean, this, the, 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 all the streets are congested. Uh, everybody's in a hurry. Um, it's just something we kind of have to live with. Even if you put up bike lanes, you know, People get impatient. Yeah, as far as the city council goes, clean the bike lanes. We have some good bike lanes out there, and they never clean them. And then enforce the traffic rules when cyclists, pedestrians are harassed. Enforce the rules. That would help us a lot. But it, yeah, each rail is doing a good job. It's perfect weather for walking, riding. Yeah, it should be fewer people in cars and more people enjoying the, the beautiful weather. I learned how to ride a bike when I was only 18 years old. Three months later, I then did the Century Ride, which was 100 miles. And I'm 19 right now, so here I am today. Okay, you're going to continue to do this then. Yeah. And since I started cycling, I literally lost 25, pound, 25 pounds, so literally shaved off the belly fat. That's a message for all of us, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> From it, I kind of learned you got to do something you like to, to be able to do, make those physical changes. I enjoy riding so much that since I live in the town, I can't really ride out, ride out because of all the traffic and the lack of bike lanes. But a good substitute is that I can either mount my bike up, mount my bike up to spin, or I can just use a stationary stationary bike. Either way, I do about two hours a day. Jay, we can do the century in September. Yep. Yep. Okay, remember this is on on camera here. So we have a commitment, yeah? Yeah. All right. We'll be there and we'll we'll look for you. We have pictures of you All right. and we have you making these statements. Sounds good. <laughs> Take a picture of that guy too. <laughs> He's the one that got me into cycling, so it's all his Good fault. Good job. <laughs> uh, we kind of just, we got something to say. We kind of just go up to each other and, and say, hey, communicate. Yes, marriage counseling. It's hard to hear because we were going so fast, oh, though. So, so It's a problem, so yeah? Fast. Yeah. So it's a lot of nonverbals and, yeah, <laughs> it's good, though. <laughs> my, my first distance ride was about 10 miles when I was about 10 years old. Uh, I started riding seriously when I was about 68. Really? Uh, did a cross country at the age of 70. It's a race. Everybody starts together on the West Coast and, and have a, a set point that you got to meet on the East Coast and you got to get there without help. I would tell them that they, they should work to make Honolulu the Amsterdam or the, the Copenhagen of the Pacific so that, you know, get all the cars off the road and all the bikes on the road make it healthier and a nicer place to live. How was your ride? It was great. What was notable? You know, the volunteer staff was great and gave really good aid stations, and the weather was good. And, you know, what can you say about the scenery? I'm not really a regular rider, but I came out for this. Yeah. Did you train for it? Sadly, no. <laughs> But I do some spinning, so. I really put out a challenge. I, we need some riders from Hawaii to come up to Michigan to try some of the trails out there. Uh, there's a the, the one called the Iceman Cometh Mountain Bike Challenge. 
And it attracts like 3,500 people, maybe up cl- probably 5,000. Where is that in Michigan? It's it's tr- close to Traverse City, Michigan. It's 30 miles through the through the woods. Beautiful single track, double track. Uh, it is true mountain bike. Uh, you have pros all the way down to amateurs, fat tires, tandems, etc. But it'd be great to have some riders out there. Well, sounds like riding is alive and well in Michigan, eh? Oh, it's it's very good. I did four rides last year in Michigan that I didn't know were there when I left there. They could also join the shorter family-friendly 5 or 10 kilometer Aloha Fun Ride on the Wailua Bike Path, starting and ending at Kayaka Bay Beach Park. For both events, cyclists were fully supported with aid stations, mechanical help, and rider support along the way. And at the end, riders enjoyed Ono food and music and got a chance to hang out with their new cycling friends. There were more than 200 HBL volunteers who lent a hand to make the Haleiwa Metric Century Ride successful. Our parent organization, it's a national organization that provides tricycles for people with special needs. And we are the local Hawaii chapter. We're called Emua Kako Trikes. And we we fit kids, especially kids, but people of all ages, um, see with physical disabilities. We see what limitations they have and what abilities they have. And we get these tricycles. We order them and, and design them just for them. We got all of our new jerseys. We got our super awesome new three feet it's the law jersey we got uh the awesome metric century ride shirts and we got all of the old century ride shirts as well we're giving out um bike lights safety bike lights today and statement of investor rights Bamboo is available here in Hawaii and plentiful, so we go with what is available on the island, and it's super strong. So it's kind of just asking to become a bike, really, growing straight out of the ground. Well, the Royal Hawaiian Band is in existence to perpetuate its legacy with the ruling monarchs. Uh, At that time, during the monarchy, the band was alive and well and supported the government or community events. We are still doing that today, 183 years later. Uh, we were formed in 1836. We have Stu Luau, and we have the uh, Sweet Star Spirits. So okay. it's uh, Sweet Star Park. So the park is all like, um, drenched with the flavor of Hawaiian salt and 
Patricia's and it's delicious. Up. So you guys have to try it when you come back. This is my third year doing this, and I was um volunteer of the year award last year. I got the volunteer of the year award last year. I actually had a really good crew this year, and they worked extremely hard. HBL has made such a difference in cycling, so whenever they call for volunteers or email me specifically, I'm happy to help out because events like this help to raise money for HBL, and that helps to make cycling better for all of us. There's usually amazing events that need amazing volunteers, and that's why we're here, to keep all of that good, happy exercise, living well, supporting bikes, supporting our community, just rolling, rolling, and rolling. As Chase said, you know, um, today we're out having fun, we're celebrating how great bicycling is, but this event is a really important fundraiser for Hawaii Bicycling League's education and advocacy work to make Hawaii more bicycle friendly and make our streets safe. Of course Hawaii, with its fabulous weather and flat peripheral topography, is perfect for recreational cycling. Cycling is good for urban transportation and ameliorates automobile congestion. Indeed, it's part of the Complete Streets Initiative, which is so important to good planning for our community. Cycling is great exercise physically and mentally and is wonderfully healthy for riders. It's one of the best sports activity you can find for competition or personal, family or group fun. It's a study in high technology materials and kinetic efficiency, which some tech and equipment freaks really love. Bicycles don't use carbon fuels or emit carbon, and that should give comfort to riders and all of us. If we would all cycle to work and around town, we would be making a material contribution to limit carbon emissions and do our part to limit global warming. Hawaii could be the biking capital of the world, but it isn't yet because the roads are not sufficiently safe for cycling. To incentivize riders, we need to build ubiquitous, well-designed and maintained bike lanes and make the roads better and safer for riders. Better, safer roads lead to more riders, and more riders lead to the political will necessary to build better, safer roads. We also need to train cyclists to be careful and respect the right-of-way of cars. And we need to train drivers to be careful and respect the right-of-way of cyclists. Remember the law of the broken paddle, where Kamehameha made it clear that everyone had a right to be on public roads? Remember that cars are deadly instruments and cyclists are completely vulnerable. Drivers should always yield to riders, even if, and especially if, the riders are not riding well. We should always keep that in mind. Here in Paradise, there have been entirely too many cycling injuries and death. Want to know more about HBL and its riding events and programs? Check out hbl.org. Better yet, contact HBL and go to a riding class or go for a ride. If you didn't ride or volunteer for the Metric Century in April, why not ride or volunteer in the Century Ride in September? And how about joining and becoming a member of HBL to support cycling in Hawaii? HBL actively advocates for better cycling conditions in Hawaii. Thanks to HBL's advocacy last year, the tree foot safe passing requirement became law, and that truly improved safety for cyclists. To learn more about HBL Wahoo Pedestrian Plan, Vision Zero, and Red Light Safety Camera Initiatives, see hbl.org slash advocacy April 19. And now let's check out our ThinkTech schedule of events going forward. ThinkTech broadcasts its talk shows live on the internet from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. Then we broadcast our early shows all night long and on the weekends. And some people listen to them all night long and on the weekends. If you missed a show or if you want to replay or share any of our shows, they're all archived on demand on thinktechhawaii.com and YouTube. For our audio stream, go to thinktechhawaii.com audio. 
and we post all our shows as podcasts on iTunes. Visit thinkthatkawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links, or better yet, sign up on our email list and get our daily email advisories. ThinkTech has a high-tech green screen studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to see it or be part of our live audience, or if you want to participate in our shows, contact shows at thinktechhawaii.com. If you want to pose a question or make a comment during a show, call 808-374-2014 and help us raise public awareness on ThinkTech. Go ahead, give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet on ThinkTech HI. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives in this islands and in this country. We want to stay in touch with you, and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of ThinkTech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Okay, Emmy, that wraps up this week's edition of ThinkTech. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on Spectrum OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Emmy does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more ThinkTech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on ThinkTech, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a guest or a host, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks so much for being part of our ThinkTech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and global awareness in Hawaii, and of course the ongoing search for innovation wherever we can find it. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. I'm Elise Anderson. And I'm Emmy Ortega Anderson. Aloha, everyone. Mm -hmm.